Okay, thank you again. Thank you everyone for joining in early. And for those who are streaming in, you will get a chance to enter or sort of fill up any of your queries during the session later. I'm Fauzi, I'm one of the teaching faculty within the Division of Industrial Design. And here we have some of our collaborators, our key collaborators for our new Masters of Design and Integrated Design. We have Associate Professor Brian Stone. We have Assistant Professor Dr. Clement Zeng. And we have uh, the amazing administrator who gets all the work done behind the scenes, uh, Nadira. And uh, the, the program outline for today, we will be sharing a little bit about the overview of the program, the benefits, the structure. But the main bulk of it will be your Q&As, any of your queries, any of your uh, questions that you would like to ask. Please fill up the uh, question in the Q&A portion, and we will be gladly uh, answer them accordingly. All right. And maybe for now, let's uh, give the opportunity for both our uh, key task force, if I may say, to introduce themselves. And maybe you can get the ball rolling on the overview of this program. Maybe as a start, Associate Professor Brian Stone. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, I have been involved in design education since 1991. I started teaching at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. I went on to pursue my advanced degree at the Ohio State University, which is one of the largest public universities, research universities in the United States. I joined the faculty there and I, I, I taught there for 20 years. While I was there, I was the graduate studies coordinator for eight years. And I had to do a lot of benchmarking and competitive analysis and recruitment around graduate studies. So I, see, I feel very comfortable in saying that we have devised a program that's highly desirable and highly competitive. I'll get into a little bit of the rationale behind what we intend to do a bit later after we hear a bit from my colleague, uh, Dr. Clement. Yes, Dr. Clement, please, may you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, uh, hi everyone. I'm Clement, really nice to meet all of you uh, online here today. Uh, I am actually a graduate of the undergrad program at the Division of Industrial Design. Uh, and after that, I decided to further my interest in interaction design by doing a master's in human computer interaction in the US, followed by a PhD in kind of a related area. And so now I'm back as a faculty and, uh, and back at NUS, I, I focus on you know, interaction design in particular, how we can build uh, interfaces beyond the keyboard and mouse and touchscreen, right? How can we build tangible interfaces that can facilitate different experiences for different people? Uh, yeah, and I'm part of uh, the task force for putting this master's program together and really looking forward to uh, uh, seeing, you know, the new ideas that people will bring in into this program. Yeah, fantastic. You're in the safe and creative hands. Okay, maybe as a start, uh, give us an overview, Ryan, on this program. Uh, happy to. Uh, first, I, I always like to uh, zoom out uh, because you want to draw the distinction between your undergraduate or your bachelor's experience and then what you're going to do at advanced degree level, whether that's a master's degree or master's degree leading into a PhD. Your bachelor's degree is typically very uh, broad in scope, and they want you to touch on lots of different things, have lots of different points of discovery, and then be prepared to actually go out in the field and work professionally. And then you have some discovery that happens over time. And then you come to this realization that you really want to do a deep dive into a particular area. In other words, you want to gain mastery in a particular space. So there, there's a very clear difference between what happens at these two levels. And it's good to see that the people here that are online, that are curious, you're taking the first step in a journey that has absolutely no downside, no negative components to it whatsoever. All right, so you're discovering, you're researching, you're asking questions, and those are some of the key characteristics and qualities needed for a good master's and PhD student. Now, with that said, when we devised this program, we thought, what can we deliver in Singapore and the National University of Singapore that can't be duplicated in other places? And bearing in mind, there's lots of very good 
advanced degree programs. We know that. But where we draw a distinction is, number one, our context. We're in a large, highly ranked research university in Southeast Asia. Singapore is home to a lot of multinational organizations. Singapore is very focused on logistics and hospitality. We have a diverse faculty, a multilingual and multicultural environment. And those are some of the things that really sort of separate us from some of our peers. And what we've developed is this program we refer to as integrated design and thinking about design holistically, collaboratively, right? And how design intersects with many different disciplines with the goal of having people coming out of our program being design leaders, design facilitators, and design collaborators. We can talk more about all these details as we move through the uh, agenda, but just as a high level, that's the goal. Great. Uh, maybe let's hear a bit about what was unique about our program and what was the benefits of it. Maybe Clement may take this one. If if we could pull up the uh, the course outline, I think that would be a good place to start. Yeah, great. Um, so, you know, to, to really describe what is unique with our program, I think the best place to start is to start with what you will actually do uh, in this program as, as a student. And so it's a one-year master's of design program, and you can see it's split across two semesters, right, beginning in August and ending in about May. Uh, in, in both of these semesters, the, the program is split into these three main uh, segments, uh, you, you could see it that way, right? So what, what's in green and blue and in that light purple uh, color over there. So in green, we have our integrated design studio, which is really the cornerstone of this MDES program and really what, what is our unique offering, right? So in this, in this integrated design studio, we will have collaborators uh, from Singapore industry uh, working and offering uh, topics that are relevant to their industry uh, for students to work on, alongside uh, mentorship from our own Division of Industrial Design academic faculty. Right? So you will have the best of both academic theoretical grounding as well as industry practice in, uh, in tackling what is a very contemporary design issue. And so that, that will form the uh, spine of, of the NLS program, which is our integrated design studio. And this will happen twice, right? Once in semester one and one in, once in semester two. Uh, to accompany this really important studio, we have uh, four, I would say, like really found, uh, fundamental classes, especially as Brian mentioned, for people looking to specialize in design, right? Uh, in design practice. Uh, in the first semester, we have classes, uh, we have two courses, uh, design research methods and emerging topics in design. And this is to give students a really broad overview of like what is most current and most important to understand as a designer in working in, in industry and in academia today, as well as what methods would a designer need to use uh, in order to engage in these uh, topics. In the second semester, we turn to the more social side of design, right? We, we have one course on design strategies and leadership and another course on collaborative design. And, and this is because design is never, it never happens individually, right? Design always happens in a team. And so what the ability to lead design in a team and collaborate with other people, uh, including designers as well as non-designers, is a really key part of uh, design success uh, in the industry. And so we have those two courses. And finally, we have the elective segments. Uh, and this is where students would get to pick and choose um, and, and tailor make this master's program to suit their, their interests and, and their uh, the goals for taking this master's, right? So uh, for instance, uh, you could be taking an uh, uh, elective uh, on something related to healthcare, right? That would better equip you to enter into a healthcare design space. Or you could be taking an elective that's more into creative technology, right? 
uh, to better equip you into that space. Uh, and so uh, the elective requirement is where we have a little bit of wiggle room for uh, students to customize uh, the, the program, the master's program based on their interests. Uh, I just want to, to um, I, I, I'm not sure if this answers the question that we have in the chat. Uh, and, and so perhaps let, let us know if uh, you have more specific questions about UX research. Um, because research is definitely one key component that we offer in this, uh, in this curriculum. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, I think building on to that one question, uh, for us, what do we expect graduates to be able to do? Or maybe even uh, the portfolio we are looking at. Maybe, Brian, you can take this one. What do we expect graduates to do? Um, I would not say that there's these sort of neat, neatly uh, choreographed job descriptions that people get slotted into. Uh, what we're hoping for more so is maybe a renaissance person is, is maybe an overstatement, but it's more for people to begin to create their own path. Right? We have positions now in service design that didn't really exist 10 years ago. We have positions in UI UX that didn't really exist 20 years ago. All right, so we want our students to be forward thinking and then help to define certain areas in the industry. Again, as I said earlier, around leading teams or being facilitators of interdisciplinary activity or, or being design managers. And some of, these, some of these engagements that are happening in many sectors in professional practice don't necessarily have a definition to them yet. We know that they're happening. But then of course, you can move into more, I would say, traditional kinds of roles, like art director. Uh, again, UI, UX, I see some interest in that. Uh, product design uh, in a design industry or maybe non-design uh, non industry organization. Right? So there's a lot of flexibility to this. And I think a lot of the roles will be revealed in this integrated design studio, All right. So when you start to work with our industry collaborators, we can start to see where some unmet needs may be and then bring some definition to those roles. Oh, of course, maybe you want to become a teacher in a university. We'll help you with that too. Great. And uh, I think one of the worries students have is usually about their portfolio. They might not be directly related to design, but they have a huge passion on it. Yeah. Um, how, how do they work around it? Maybe. Or, oh, okay. Let me take that one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the first is nobody here should worry. All right. Worry is one of these emotions that paralyzes us. And you simply have what you have, which you should show and talk about is your design aptitude, right? your ability to identify problems, write design briefs, think creatively, perspective shift. And those things can be demonstrated obviously in a design portfolio, but it could be demonstrated through maybe a project plan that you developed. Or maybe you can talk about how you've interfaced with other people from design and what your role was. All right, so what we're, again, we're looking for people who are more engaged in the process, the verb part of the design, because our expectation is that you're already fairly accomplished in the noun, the making part of it. All right, so don't worry, just make your argument that you are a good collaborator and want to work in the space of design. That's what we're looking for. Good collaborator in the space of design. Fantastic. Uh, we have a, a question on the collaboration portion of our program and what are some of the plans we have with companies. Maybe Clement, you can take that. And building on that, there's also the question on the research of our methods. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so perhaps let me comment on the uh, research methods uh, question first. Um, so specifically, we look to equip students with design research methods. Uh, and design research methods tend to be more qualitative in nature, simply because qualitative methods are a little bit more agile. 
the it's it's um, and and the design process is really about iteratively discovering um, the needs of the situation and responding with prototypes and you know this iterative process and so typically in, in this uh, in this process of design right like like Brian was saying um, we tend to engage in more qualitative methods interviews focus groups observations uh, and then these are things that we would uh, focus on. Um, Quantitative research uh, is, they are important, right? Uh, and um, we would definitely need to touch on that a little bit, but that would tend to um, be more late stage design, right? Let's say you really need to do like A-B testing on, on quite a final uh, finalized design just to make certain small decisions about how to tweak the design, uh, or you need to do market research on a product that has launched. Um, that's where I think we would lean more into quantitative research methods. Yeah, so so I hope that addresses the question. But uh, I mean, personally, I, I would say that we, we would emphasize more on the qualitative methods than the quantitative methods. Yeah. Um, so for that second question, I think maybe uh, Brian and I, and I can both respond to it. Uh, I'm just going to give my quick take on it, and then I think Brian can has much more details on it. Uh, Essentially, I think collaboration um, can take many formats, uh, and the Singapore, you know, is home to many many companies, both local as well as multinational. And in setting up this program, we have we have got many endorsements from from these different stakeholders, right? And so, uh, in working with our corporate partners, uh, we are hoping to bring them in. Uh, you know, different companies in different semesters and they would propose different topics that, that is relevant to the company. It could be something that the company is actually actively engaged in or it could be a hypothetical question that the company is interested to pursue, right? And then um, we would actually invite this company in as also teachers in this course and work with them to facilitate the integrated design studio. So that's kind of like a high level. Uh, but, but I think Brian would be able to comment a lot more on this. Yeah, just to expand on a few logistics, and this is a bit of a hypothetical, but let's say that we have a cohort of 20 students and we will invite five uh, corporate partners or collaborators from various industries. And then I'll parse that number out. So I'll say, I'm gonna send four students to work with this high tech organization. I'm going to send four students to work with this hospitality organization, four students to work with this health care organization, four students to work on consumer products, and four service, four students to work with a non-government agency. All right. And so you'll you'll sort of be divided and working in small teams, and you'll be interfacing directly with designers and other stakeholders at that organization. So the project that you'll be working on, as Clement said, could be a real world contemporary problem that the organization is faced with, or it could be something more uh, forward thinking. I think one of the, the other really advantageous things here is during this experience, which will happen over two semesters, you will be building rapport with people in these organizations. You'll be expanding your professional network with people in these organizations with hopefully the, you know, the ultimate goal is that you have a direct pipeline for potential employment with some of these organizations. Then one of the other things that's nice in terms of what happens is then we bring the entire cohort back together for some experiences. So you do some knowledge sharing. So you talk about workflow and processes that are universal or unique to healthcare versus high tech. So when you, the big takeaway is that you have a good sense of how organizations operate internally across a, a wide range of disciplines and domains. So I think I'm ready to sign up. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I was catching the keyword access to industry. I think that that's a goal. And then the goal is for us to create design leaders. If anyone really has other burning questions, please fill up because then we can really cater our answers to you specifically because we, we, we might have different answers for different questions. Okay. I think uh, 
without a bachelor's degree in design joint. Yes, I think uh, Brian did answer that. You, you may not have a degree directly in, de in design, but you have an aptitude for design. You are willing to be collaborative with design. I think you are more than welcome to join the program. Yeah, just as a, uh, maybe a concrete example. Yep. Uh, we have people we know that are in a transitional phase professionally. All right. Maybe they started off uh, in computer science or computer engineering, work for a company, they're doing a lot of work on the back end, and all of a sudden they get quite intrigued with the things that happen on the front end. And then they have an opportunity to work with someone on some front end problems, and they say, yeah, this is the space where I want to I, I spend a lot more time on. Coming into a master's program like this is ideal for those kinds of transitional uh, people trying to migrate from one profession to the one professional specialization to another. So we see it with people involved in journalism and communication that migrate into design. In fact, I, I can recall in the early, early phases of interaction design, most of the people came from industrial design because they were already well-versed in, in cause and effect, right? Input and output. And so they went into that area and then ultimately started to transition into some other areas that we define as UI UX. So I apologize, that was a long explanation to say it's design aptitude. If you think about design in the process, verb, activity, problem solving context, those people would be ideal to join us. The, the, uh, finding the voice, the inner designer. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's, there's a more technical question about whether they are able to join this, to join this with an integrated models as UE. Does any, the Clement or Brian? Sorry, I, I, let me. I'm looking for the yeah, question. Someone, again. someone is uh, in, in the different masters program. Are they able to join the integrated modules as UE? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, see, unrestricted. So the unrestricted electives, those are open if you are already at NUS. Those are open to anyone at NUS. One of the other things that we didn't didn't really plan to talk about is also graduate certificates. All right, so there's opportunities to just take the one integrated design studio in semester one or the one studio in semester two, or maybe the cluster of design leadership and collaborative design just in one semester for eight credits or eight units and get a certificate in that one particular area. All right, so you can be in a master's program, let's say in um, biomedical engineering. And we do a lot of collaboration with that, uh, with that department, but then also do a, a sort of one semester immersion in a particular topic and get a graduate certificate from the Division of Industrial Design. If someone have an answer whether we can get a recording, okay, we won't be posting the recording in its entirety. And we'll, we'll cuff out parts of it to share on our social media. But uh, if you have any question now, do, do fill in your questions. Or otherwise, there'll be actually upcoming webinars if you miss out on any details. We could actually share uh, this uh, recording on our uh, NUSDID YouTube. Uh, perhaps I can provide you the link in the chat. Sure, great. Wonderful. Staff concession for tuition available for NUS staff. Okay, this. Uh, what I can say is that there is the there is a rebate for Singaporeans and permanent residents. It's 20%. And if you are a Singaporean or PR and an NUS alumni, it's a 25% rebate. So to the, the person who's in the, the staff member, uh, there's the, there's a rebate there if you're Singaporean or PR. And if you graduated, then it's, then it's even higher. Are there any other uh, questions that we, uh, we you all have for us? 
maybe Brian is a one of our we we wait for if any other last questions. But one of the questions that I really want to ask is what are your hopes when students do graduate from this master's program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, I, uh, masters and PhD experiences, um, they they are terrific, terrific experiences. They not only elevate your skill level, they elevate your intellectual capacity. They're also great, great networking environments because usually you have a cohort and everybody goes out to very prominent positions here. And so obviously I hope that you have a good experience here and that you stay connected with the division of industrial design. I have, I am drifting a little bit, but I have professors that I have had 20 years ago and I still have regular conversations with them because design is constantly changing, constantly emerging, and it's nice to always have those resources to speak to. So with that, I'm, I'm hoping that our students will really be thought leaders in the industry. They'll have high degrees of visibility. They'll make a name for themselves individually, and it'll help elevate the profile, profile of our program collectively. And we're well suited for all of this because we have the resources to do this. Uh, we have the intellectual capacity and the expert, expertise to deliver. And with us being in the context of a university such as NUS, uh, there's a lot of collaborative relationships that we can leverage. Clement, uh, have you shared about the advanced design platform? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can share a bit more about the advanced design platforms. So the advanced design platform is, uh, is part under the UE, the unrestricted elective segment. Uh, and so it is a choice uh, for students to, to take. So it's not, a, it's not a requirement, you know, students can be taking other courses, but the advanced design platform is one of the, uh, the courses that are available. So the advanced design platform is essentially uh, a studio-based class. So it's similar to the integrated design studio in that it's project work and that there will be different topics every semester, um, but, in, but expect it to be much lighter than the integrated design uh, studio, which is you know, really the cornerstone of the MDES program. So in the design platform every semester, we will have uh, anything from 10 to even 20 topics in different areas of design, right? For instance, furniture design, healthcare design, uh, interaction design, uh, material exploration. And this, this advanced design platform would be conducted along with our undergraduate design platform. So uh, people, um, MDES students in the advanced design platform would be taking this course with undergraduate students in our industrial design program. And this is one way for uh, this is one way for the MDES students in the MDES program to really pick a topic um, that they want to specialize in, or maybe it's an unfamiliar topic that they would like to get to know a bit better. Um, the advanced design platform is a great way to do that. Because imagine that out of 10 topics, um, one of them probably will be something that you are really curious about, right? And so that's that's why we put the advanced design platform as an unrestricted elective. Um, so just recap, it's a project-based class that is conducted along with our undergraduate design program. Uh, and um, every semester we have a range of 10 to 20 topics, which changes every semester, depending on the tutors that are offering it. And this is a good chance for people to either specialize or you know, get um, acquainted with an area of design that they are curious about. I hope, I hope that is something that will excite everyone to join this program. And as a summary, what I can highlight and some of my keynotes that I take away from both Brian and Clem is you carve out your focus. You are able to specialize and dive into what you're interested in. We are collaborative. We are building on facilitation. There's access to the industry. But most importantly, we are hoping to build design leaders. So thank you for joining us in this webinar. And I hope this is a beneficial session. There's more webinars to come. So do follow our social media page to be informed and updated. Thank you for joining us this afternoon.